30th verse of uh, the second chapter of Jeremiah. Um, who was the king of um, Judah at the time that um, Jeremiah uttered these words to the people of Judah? Well, the answer is uh, uh, most likely, probably, uh, and probably for, for sure, probably for sure, that's not very sure, is it, Rachel? For sure, it was Josiah. Now, what kind of a character was Josiah? He was a great king. He was a reformer. He was on target. Um, he did everything, I think he did, according to the scripture, according to Second Kings, Second Chronicles, he did everything he could to bring the people back to the um, uh, law of Moses, to the worship as directed by the law of Moses. Now, um, I, what do you suppose the reaction of those people in his audience uh, was? Uh, what do you suppose the citizens' reaction was to Josiah bringing about these reforms? See, his um, uh, an earlier king, grandfather, um, the uh, uh, Manasseh, was an awful person. He, he burned his children in, in the fires of Molech, worship of Molech, um, Baal kind of worship kind of thing. Um, he shed innocent blood uh, just terribly. It was a, he was a terrible person in, in that respect. Um, and now here's this, Josiah comes along and and he's trying to reform the, the group morally, religiously, um, in terms of civil, um, you know, civil ac action, civil uh, responsibility. Um, I suppose everybody fell in line. Do you suppose everybody fell in line and, and, and they all repented and all, all went, to, you know, forward, so to speak? Um, well, let, let's suppose, now think right now of the, the, most, um, the, the most righteous member of our brotherhood. You know, think of somebody, think of some great gospel preacher. Um, uh, let's say the, the, um, the president of, of, um, of one of the uh, where some of our kids go to school, the president of one of the colleges, uh, uh, Freed Hardeman. Let's suppose the president, and he's a great guy, um, smart guy. Let's suppose he were president of the United States and, and came in and, and started reform. You know, he, he, he talked about um, the sanctity of life, and, and he really promoted the sanctity of life. And he, he promoted uh, um, marriage as, as it is as it is identified in the scripture. And he just promoted all the things of scripture. And suppose he started his, his uh, uh, addresses to the nation with, with scripture and with prayer. Um, I suppose all the American people would just, amen. Isn't that great? Is that right? Pardon me? You think you'd get us some pushback? He'd get some pushback from lots of quarters, wouldn't he? Now, Josiah was probably getting some pushback from the people that were, you know, really attached to Baal. You suppose Jeremiah got some pushback? Um, we, in, in, in one of our first uh, sessions with regard to Jeremiah, we chronicled about 15 or 20 um, times in, in, his, in his book where, where he was persecuted, thrown in, in the dungeon. Um, he, was, uh, he was beaten. His own family, his own neighborhood people were, were negative to him. Um, and, and you see, 
it was because of the pushback that was, was happening. Um, and then as Josiah, after Josiah was killed in a skirmish with the, with the Egyptian army, um, after he was um, uh, 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 away from the scene, he had a son that was no good, who ruled. And then there wasn't a good king after him. Uh, and they were carried away into Babylonian captivity. So this, this whole thing of reformation, um, getting a, a whole society to get back to, uh, if they ever were, to God and to, to the scripture, um, uh, in, in that era was, was an awesome task, and, it, and it's an awesome, it would be an awesome task for any social order, any... Um, any leadership of any country bringing people back. Um, well, in the uh, 29th verse, we were finished up there last week at 29th verse. Will you, will you, he's saying, now he, he chronicled some of the, um, the awful things that they were doing uh, as, a social, as a society, as individuals within a society. And then, then he says here in verse 29, um, uh, God uh, speaking here, wherefore will you plead with me? Um, this sounds like a, you know, kind of a court scene. Will you plead with me? Um, Why? Well, I, I mean, what, what's your, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you know what, what do you got to say for yourself? What do you, what do you have to say for yourself? Um, then he says. Uh, you've all transgressed, all, ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. Now, in vain, in verse 30, in vain have I, submit, have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. They went after the prophets like a lion going after its prey. That's, that's what it says here. They were vicious. According to this, they were vicious uh, toward their prophets like a destroying lion. Um, now, he says there that they have smitten your children. Why did he smite, why did he smite those people? To try to get them what back to them to, to you know to to him and, and according to verse thirty uh, when they when they when he smote when he punished them what was their response now and previously during the period of the judges and in you know in, in previous times um, when God punished them they they came back but what what about this group of people according to this. He says, I've smitten your children. They receive no correction. You ever seen a, you ever seen a, well, I'm sure that Rachel, you teach, and others that who teach in school, you have some firsthand experience. You ever, ever seen a, a kid that, regardless of what you do, try to correct them, it doesn't work? Ever seen that, Rachel? I mean, you try everything. And it's like I remember, and one of my students, when I was a principal, he got 45 paddlings. Now that was years ago when you could paddle kids, you know. That was, that was ancient history. Uh, got 45 paddlings a year. Just nothing seemed to work with the kid. Uh, it, was, it was obvious the paddling <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, you know, hey, God tried everything and, and the correction didn't work. It didn't, it didn't bring him back. Um, I, I remember in the old farm community, there was a, um, one of the uh, old guys was telling, you know, they, the farmers used to get a, come around, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd have morning discussions or whatever, just like you have at the, the McDonald's or whatever. And oh, he said that, that uh, this, one, this one boy got, his dad stopped three or four times on the way to town to paddle him, you know, get out of the car and paddle him. Three or four times, and it was only three miles. 
from the farm to the town. And, and it didn't work. Correction didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Give up. Let's try something else. Um, so it, it didn't, it, nothing. It was kind of like nothing worked in terms of punishment to bring them back. Um, it wasn't my dad, and uh, uh, huh? No, I don't think so. Um, not that I was a model child, but I didn't. Uh, I wasn't in that category. Um, and and he, he says like that. Um, o generation, see ye the word of the Lord? Have I been? Um, have I been a wilderness unto to Israel, a land of darkness? No. We talk about groping in the dark. Why do you grope in the dark? You don't have any sense of direction, right? Uh, at least um, most people wouldn't have any sense of direction in, 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 the, in the dark. When you're, when you're driving in the daytime, it's a lot different than driving at night. Is that right? Things, do, things look different at night when, when it's dark. Well, um, did, did, God ever, did, all, did God ever leave them in the dark? We talk about, you know, you, you, know, you left me in the dark. What's that mean? Didn't tell me. Did he ever leave the children of Israel without guidance, without direction, without law. Did he ever? Well, they, that's rhetorical. The answer, of course, is no. He, he always gave them guidance, whether it was in the wilderness, whether it was in the land of Palestine, whether it was in terms of the preparing the uh, Ark of the Covenant, uh, preparing um, uh, the... Uh, the tabernacle? Did he, did he leave them to their own devices in, in any respect? No, he, he gave them direction. And he's saying, he's saying to them, have I left you in the dark without direction? Well, the answer was obvious. Um, and then he says, wherefore say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. We are lords. The English Standard Version says, we are free. Now, um, sometimes when people leave the church or leave religion, um, they kind of take the attitude they're, they're free, right? Sometimes when kids leave home, uh, particularly homes where there's structure and where there's expectations and, and, and they leave, sometimes they consider themselves to be what? Free. Ah, I can do what I want to do. I'm, I'm free. Some, some people leave the church so that they can be free, not bound by moral standards, not bound by what else? Any standards? Why do we have a multi-billion-dollar opioid crisis in this state, in, in Ohio? Why do we have that? Because some people have decided they want to be free. Why do we have such moral degradation in our social order? Because people have said we're going to be free. We're not going to follow any dictates of Scripture. We're not going to follow any standards of morality. We're going to be free. And that's what the people of Israel were all about. He says, we are lords. When a, when a person says, we're going to be free, what's that mean? That means nobody's going to tell me what to do. God is not going to tell me what to do. I'm free. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. 
and nobody better challenge me with regard to it because I am the Lord of my life. That, see, that was the attitude of, of Jerusalemites, the people of Jerusalem. We are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Now, he, Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah uses this, this marriage relationship oftentimes um, and, and divorce and marriage and, 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 and the, re the relationship between you know, married people and, and, and it, he uses it all through his, his, his uh, scriptures. Um, and he says, now, he, he's kinda, it's kind of as if God's thinking, now, let's think about this. Now, now, I want you to think with me about this. You know, our relationship, Israel's relationship with God. I want you to think about it. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. In that social order, um, the uh, married women wore tokens of their being married, just like rings are a token of marriage today. Um, can, can, can a person forget that? that responsibility, and, and he's, he's likening that to, you know, you, you have left me. You have gone astray. You've left me. And, and, he, and he's saying, boy, that is, think about it. Is that, that's, that's as bad as a, as a maid with regard to re, not, not remembering the tokens of her, of her uh, marriage. Can a maid forget her ornament or a bride, her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me without number. Without number? What's he, what's he saying there, without number? Huh? With, without number, not only a long time, but what? Multiple times, right? <laughs> Multiple times. You know, over the years, and it's just been uh, my people have forsaken me over and over and over again, going through a lot of different cycles. Well... Uh, why trimmest thou thy way, in verse 33, why trimmest thou, or adjust thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Now, uh, let's look at the English Standard Version with regard to verse 33. Um, the print is so small. He's, there it says, he, it's translated, how well ye direct your course to seek love. How well do you direct your course to seek love? Um, in other words, you're, you're, really, you're really intent on, on this whole thing. You're really intent. The latter part of that, second part of that verse, so that even to wicked women, Ye have taught your ways. Now, that's pretty bad. That they were so proficient in chasing Baal, chasing the idolatry, they were so proficient in it, they were so skilled at it, that they could teach a wicked woman, or um, a prostitute, they could teach her a thing or two. The Jews were so bad that they could even teach prostitutes, evil people, how to be more evil. Isn't that an indictment in this courtroom scene? <laughs> you, you, you people, um, you can, you can, you can teach the wicked ones thy ways. You're so bad that you're worse than the wicked ones, and you could teach them a thing or two. That's how bad they were. Well, um, let's uh, see what else. 
Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of poor innocents. Now, how bad is the social order when they, de when they don't have, when people don't have respect for, sympathy for, affinity to innocence, poor people, babies. How bad is a social order that doesn't have sympathy for, compassion for, poor, the poor, the babies, the innocent ones? How bad is that social order? How bad is a social order that has an organization that sells baby parts? I mean, think about that. How bad is a social order? How bad is an organization that sells baby parts from abortions? How bad is a social order? How bad is a people that would do that? Just like, just like that social order. How bad is a social order that would throw their babies in the fire in the honor of a, of a heathen God. How bad is that, see? I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is bad social order. And a, and a social order that does the things, some of the things that the social order in this country do, do is really bad. Blood in the skirts. Blood so, so much that it's, all over the clothes of the people that are involved. Um, I have not found it by secret search, but upon every and all these. God says, I didn't need a search warrant, or I, I don't need a search warrant to, to go looking for what you did. Now what he says, what's he say there? He says, um, I, I've not found it by secret search, but upon every, but upon all these, what's he say? Huh? Common. <laughs> I mean, it is apparent. It's all over the place. It's obvious. It's conspicuous. It's part of the lifestyle. It's it's the social order. I don't. I don't have to go. You know, we we have police people that. Uh, you know, there's, they think there's a crime over here in the house, and they they go to the judge and get a search warrant, go in and, and, and they they hunt hunt down the clues. Um, we have a forensic, a whole body of science uh, forensics that that deals with finding clues to murders and, and and all kinds of crimes. We have that. You know, we have a whole the whole a whole industry in forensic um, and, and, you know, looking for God said, I, I, I don't have to look for it. It's, it's, on, it's on exhibition. You know, it's, it's full, full, dis, full, full display. But yet thou sayest, because I'm innocent, yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, Surely his angry shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest I have not sinned. Now, think about that. Because I am, they, they, they're saying, they do all their stuff, and then they say they're innocent. How could that be? How could a person be so hardened that they would do awful things and then, then say, well, I'm, How could, how, how could people abort babies intentionally and say, I haven't done anything wrong? How could, you know, I, 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 no, 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 no wrongdoing there. Um, how could 
people justify killing somebody with the attitude, well, they deserved it. I mean, this, this is the people. This is the kind of th thing that this... How could Manasseh, the king of Judah, how could he just willy-nilly kill people and be in and just, that's okay. Well, that's the situation in Israel. They said, well, we, we haven't sinned by sacrificing our babies to Moloch, a Baal god. Um, we haven't done it. We haven't done anything wrong. Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Now that, why gaddest thou about, about so much to change thy way? What's the English Standard Version say uh, in, that, in that verse, verse 36? Um, verse 36, in the, how, much, how much you go about changing your ways? Uh, another way of saying gaddest. Um, do we, I don't know, do we use that word that word gaddest any much anymore? Somebody, we used to say but somebody was a gad about. What's that mean? What's that? Carolyn, you're of that vintage, that age. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of flipping around. Uh, a gad about. Um, for those young people, that's maybe a new word for you. Um, Get about uh, just going. Why gaddest about thou about so much to change thy ways? Thou also shall be ashamed of Egypt as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. So we th we think of a person of a gad about just going here and there and willy nilly all over the place. Now uh, Israel was supposed to or then Judah was supposed to depend on God for for their um, for their protection. And so what did they do? Instead of that, try to make a deal with Assyria. And that might have worked for a while, and then things didn't, the, that, those treaties or those covenants didn't work very well. So they, they, they go down to Egypt and make a deal, send an envoy, uh, send some people over to Egypt. Um, you know, we do this, our country does the same thing. Uh, they send, the president sends an envoy to uh, uh, this country and that country and and uh, try to make a deal and send, send somebody to China, send somebody to Russia, send somebody to England, send, you know, all over the place, try to, try to get a, a deal going. Well, that's what, that's what was happening here with, with uh, Judah. And, and, um, and did it work? <laughs> you know, here, here, think about this. Assyria took away the northern tribes during the, the time of, I, of, of Isaiah, Assyria took away the northern tribes. Here's a hundred years later, and, and at the same time that the Assyrians took away uh, the northern tribes, Assyria surrounded Jerusalem and about starved them to death, so much so that they were eating their own children for food. That's recorded in the scripture. And providentially and miraculously, God destroyed 180,000 troops and the Assyrians went home. Now, Assyria was always messing around with territories around Jerusalem and always threatening, threatening Jerusalem. And of course, Assyria was always in, in, in uh, in, in a fight with Egypt, and the Egyptians didn't have any more regard for Judah than the Assyrians did. So um, here's, here's little Judah, Jerusalem, in between Assyria and Egypt, and they were always trying to make a deal with one or the other. Because Assyria and Egypt were at loggerheads, right? 
loggerheads, does that mean anything? They're always fighting each other, right? And so, and here's little Judah in between. So now, uh, Judah tries to make or, a deal with one of them and then another one. Well, uh, God said, you know, that's a shameful thing. Uh, yea, thou shalt go forth from him, and thine hands upon thine head, for the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper at them. Now, with that idea, he says, thou, thou shalt go forth from him, that is, Assyria, Egypt, with their hands on their head. Now, what, what does that mean, you know? You know, hand, what, what's that, that idea, their hands on their head? I mean, they yeah, kind of like stick them up, you know? <laughs> Get your hands up, but, you know, which is hard to do much with your hands up, right? Hands on your head, uh, kind of symbolic of being taken prisoner, uh, uh, being immobilized. You see, the Egyptians killed Josiah, the king that uh, was reigning at the time of Jeremiah. The Egyptians killed him. So that they weren't any friends of the, the, the people of Judah. And, and the Assyrians were threatening to take Judah. And who else was on the scene threatening Judea? Babylon. See, Babylon was increasing in world power. Assyria was decreasing in world power. And you had all this, all these um, balls in the air that they, they were trying to juggle. And the problem was they weren't relying on, on the, their God. So, uh, chapter 2 closes with that notion that um, there that Israel's in big trouble and so further God illuminates the situation by saying they say if a man put away his wife and she go shall go from him and become another man's wife shall he return unto her again shall not the land be grieved greatly polluted but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers yet return again to me saith the Lord now uh, God is saying now you know you've had a covenant a kind of a marital relationship with me um, and, and you um, if you if a, if a man put away his wife now, in Deuteronomy 24, chapter, um, if, a, if a Jewish person uh, got divorced, man divorced his wife, and the wife marry, remarries, was there any provision for the first husband taking her back? Huh? It was no. That was done. Uh, it, it, in fact, that. It, it, it's described in scripture that would be a pollution. Well, um, she's married to another. Well then, um, but thou hast played the harlot. You, he says, you've gone off and, and, and you've left the God of your fathers and you've gone off into idolatry. You've loved uh, idolatry rather than me, God is saying. You played the harlot. But then he says, return to me, saith the Lord. Now, could they have, as bad as they were, could they have come back to God? As bad as they were. Think of the worst person in, in the history of the world, just in your own mind. Just think of the worst person in the history that, that, that you know about. 
think of that. If, if that worst person could have, would have genuinely, truly, wholeheartedly, totally, completely repented, was there any, would there be any way God would have accepted? Manasseh was carried away that, little, that one of the worst kings ever lived on this face of the earth, probably parallel to Hitler. Um, Manasseh, when he's carried away into captivity, um, humbled himself. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, the Medo-Persian, no, no, the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king, uh, was a haughty, uh, arrogant um, person. And God subjected him to seven years of living like an animal. And he did at least some kind of repentance. How do we know that? The scripture tells us that. So he did some kind of repentance and uh, declared that the Hebrew God was to be worshipped. That his people were to worship the Hebrew God. So uh, there's lots of examples of people in the, in the scriptures being bad people that, that have repented. And, and God is, is, is saying to them, you know, as rotten, dirty, no good as you are, um, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Now, obviously, they couldn't return in the condition they were in. They had to return in uh, as, as penitent people. Uh, I mean, this whole idea of repentance. Now, um, I think Tim was talking a little bit about this in one of his um, sermons or messages. Uh, but what was the message of John the Baptist? And, and why that message? What was, his, what was his kind of his total message? Repent. That was there, you know. Here's um, th th this um, 500 years later. Uh, God was still dealing with this. What, what he was saying, he was saying here: you repent, 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 repent. 500 years later, John the Baptist was when when the kingdom was introduced. Repent. Why? kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and the Pharisees and, uh, the Pharisees came out and the Sadducees and all the religious leaders came out to John to find out what's going on and, and, and what did John say to them? Did they repent? He said, you snakes, <laughs> you copperheads, you, you rattlesnakes. You know, it was kind of like, it was, I think probably John's attitude was, you vipers, you snakes, get out of here. You're not repenting. You know, you've got to bring forth fruits that indicate that you've repented. Well, uh, he says here, um, you, 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 better, you better repent. All right? You know, if you repent, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll deal. We'll deal with you. You repent. I'll deal with you. Now he says, Lift up thine eyes into the high places and see where thou hast not been lain with. He says, Now he's bringing them back to, he's telling them, now, You got to return if you return, but now look around, he's saying. Look, look into the, you know, look around the community. Uh, lift up thine eyes into the high places and see where thou hast been lain with. 
That is, uh, you know, that you've been messing around with idolatry. In the ways, in the ways hast thou sent for them um, as the Arabian or the Arabs in the wilderness. Now, this idea of the, the Arabs in the wilderness and the Arabians in the wilderness, what's that about? Well, what, what were those people doing in the wilderness? How'd they make a living in the wilderness? How do you suppose they made a living? Growing a little cup of corn out in the desert? That wouldn't work. Uh, drill a hole in a cactus and get some cactus water and sell it to, you know, to people passing by? They probably lived by looting. They probably lived by, you know, a caravan's going along, and they, they see this caravan going on, and they, and they, they rush and, and, and steal their stuff. That, that's the way they made a living, apparently. Now, God is saying, think about this, folks. You've pursued this, the, these idols, you've pursued idolatry in the same manner that... Uh, an Arab in the wilderness is just jumping on a caravan or, 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 or a, a, a you know or anybody uh, just uh, you know we talk about highway robbers we talk about you know how they you know when the stagecoaches had, had, had to have somebody ride, ride shotgun well why was that robbers um, well We'll uh, pick up there next week.